for joining uh, this live. Uh, my name is Kayla Cox, for those of you who do not know me. Uh, I am uh, the owner of this here channel, Six Miles to Supper, and uh, Six Miles to Supper pretty much describes how I lost 80 pounds with intermittent fasting. Uh, I basically walked six miles a day as my exercise, and for the bulk of the time that I was losing the weight, I was eating one meal a day. Um, I've practiced all different kinds of intermittent fasting. I really enjoy various windows, but my favorite preferred way to do this is just by eating once a day, just sitting down, having a nice big meal, eating whatever I want at that meal, and then when I stand up from the table, not eating again until the next day. Sorry, I see that this uh, camera seats, <laughs> it's like focusing in and out, and I'm not sure if I can fix that or not. But um, the, <laughs> the setup here is a little bit different than it normally is, um, because I, I'm in a, a new house, we bought a house, uh, which is great, but like our, our, our internet has been an issue, uh, which hopefully is going to all be good soon. <laughs> so uh, if you have a question uh, about weight loss or about intermittent fasting or about um, walking or just getting in good habits with uh, weight loss and uh, maintenance also, I've been in maintenance now since October of 2018, which is five and a half years or so, five? about five and a half years. So, uh, and I think maintenance really is uh, the, the key. Uh, it, it's actually, um, I think where a lot of, well, I swear I always got tripped up, you know, um, <laughs> with weight loss. I mean, I, I usually can figure out somehow how to get it off. You know, I would get it off, you know, various ways. I've done every diet, every diet in the world. I, <laughs> I feel like I've tried it at least once or at least for a day. Um, uh, and, uh, they never worked in the long term. Uh, I could get it off, but I could never keep it off. And so uh, that has been the difference this time with intermittent fasting because it's been a, a way to just change my life permanently, change my habits permanently, and that has led to permanent weight loss. So uh, I should say, I also, um, I... Um, I have maintained like the, my maintenance. I have a, a range that I have to maintain in, which is the 140s. That's just my goal. Like I just want to be in the 140s. So I went from a high weight of highest confirmed weight of 222.2 uh, .2 pounds down to like 142, and now my goal is just maintaining the 140s. Um, so, uh, so there you go. So let's see if we get any questions. Hey there, uh, Andrea, and hey, uh, uh, Carissa. She's WAPF health coach. Um, Thank you for being an insider. Uh, thank you also to all the insiders. Michelle, I see you out there. Uh, thank you so much uh, to all the insiders. Insiders do get access to an additional weekly live and office hours on Discord. Also, I, I just have a Discord set up for, um, for people uh, on this channel. Um, who are insiders and um and so you can go in there hang out with other fasters get to know them um and it's a good group so um so thank you everyone and i also do a vlog that i post to from time to time for insiders uh where i just kind of talk about maintenance and what i'm doing so sometimes i talk about what i eat uh i watched a previous video michelle asked i watched a previous video and you talked about a newsletter do you still offer a sign up uh, for a newsletter that you put out. I do actually uh, every week. I try to be good about this, but I, I see, I know that people don't like, not everybody sees everything I post. So basically I have no other social media, uh, other than this channel. <laughs> so YouTube is the only place where I'm at. I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on Instagram, anything. So, uh, I do post things like that to the community tab. So like once a week, usually, you know, I just, I just realized yesterday was Thursday and I did not do the newsletter. <laughs> did I not do it? Wow. See, I, I, I say this sometimes on these lives, like I have a very hard time uh, remembering what day it is. A lot of times, I mean, like it's difficult for me to remember like, okay, I gotta, like, I've got a live today at noon. I have to like really remind myself. Um, and, um, and I think yesterday I just... <laughs> I didn't do it. So I do try to do the newsletter once a week. Um, it's called a weekly newsletter for that very reason, but I, I suppose we will not have one this week. But um, but yes, you can sign up for it anytime. Uh, you can you can either just follow the link um, on the community tab. Um, if you just scroll through the post, you'll see where it says, you know, sign up for the newsletter, or you can visit my website, sixmilestosupper.com slash newsletter and sign up there. It's free. I send it out once a week or 
more rare than that. <laughs> um, and um, uh, and what it contains, just, you know, I try to include helpful hints about the weight loss journey, just tips, you know, think, things that I think about from time to time about, you know, like, I think this has really helped me. Um, and I also have a column that I do uh, inside that newsletter is called Dear Kayla. And so people can write uh, me uh, like questions, you know, they can talk about their situation um, and then I will write a response. And, um, and so those are always fun. And um, I also sometimes talk about just what's going on in my life. Um, you know, if there's any kind of like update that's like kind of like I wouldn't necessarily do a whole video about it, but you know, maybe it's something to share. Uh, I'll do it on there. So, uh, so that's what, and I also include links to like, um, you know, various resources, uh, that I have put out, you know, freebies and whatnot. Also, um, links to like content that I have published that maybe you didn't see. Cause sometimes I do like blog posts. Um, and sometimes I'll do uh, a podcast and say, maybe not everybody sees that I did the podcast, things like that. So, so yes, six months com slash newsletter. Um, hi, Regina. Uh, okay. Emmanuel K. I think it's K says, how do you ensure you don't lose muscle mass if you always do OMAD? Well, you know, that's a good question. Like, I just don't worry about it. Like, I know, I know that's a thing on people's minds. Like, I mean, I used, I used to worry about like everything, <laughs> germs and muscle mass. And uh, am I, you know, am I eating the right things? You know, like I would just overthink everything to the nth degree. And that did not serve me well when I was trying to lose weight because it was like, I could never, I could never just focus and do the thing because I was so worried about like, well, what if this, and what if that, and what if this, and, and so here's how I think about it. Here's how I approach it. First of all, um, I feel strong. <laughs> um, I, uh, occasionally will lift weights. I'm trying to get back into a lifting, uh, uh, like routine. I am, I, I have the weights. They're sitting currently in um, a, uh, the woodshed, <laughs> uh, and we we are gonna try to like get a space set up. Like so, we we had a space set up at my last house. I did not get into a good routine because I the first, like I it was a week or so into lifting, and I tweaked my back yet again. And and in hindsight, I was just I, it, it had nothing to do with like lack of food or anything. It was just simply. I did a weird, awkward movement with a, like a, a 35 pound plate, 25 or 35 pound plate. I was just, I was just not being uh, careful. And, um, and so, yeah, so I hurt myself. So then that kind of knocked me off the routine. And then like with this, the, this, the buying a house, like that distracted me, you know, th these things, uh, remind me how hard it is to, once you're in a routine, like it's pretty easy, but getting into the routine is difficult. And, um, so yeah, so I'm, I plan to, um, to get back into that, but, um, like I, you know, like I just look, I, I look at it this way. Basically with OMAD, I'm eating the amount of calories I need in order to maintain my, you know, 140s kind of frame. Okay. Which is, you know, uh, I'm five, six, uh, just for kind of like, so you can kind of know, like, w like, what does that mean? Like, you know, I'm, uh, um, one forties. And so, uh, I'm five, six, that puts me just on like, just inside of the normal BMI range. So I'm on the, like the higher end of normal. Okay. So, um, so it's not like I'm super skinny, right? <laughs> like I'm just like, I would say just average kind of, um, and I'm able to maintain my weight on, on, you know, OMAD one meal a day. And I feel great. I feel like really energetic. You know, I, I feel like I have, you know, good health just generally. I don't get sick very often. I mean, every, everybody gets sick from time to time, but it, I, when I do get sick, I tend to recover quickly. Um, uh, when I go to the dentist, I generally don't have cavities, you know, like, so I feel like these, you know, various health markers, um, the blood pressure's good, you know, like just things like that. Like I, I feel like I'm in a good state and, um, humans for thousands of years just ate food. Like they just ate. And then it was like, you know, you're full. So you stop eating or you find, you know, <laughs> when you can find food, you eat it. Right. Um, and we've all been fine. Like, we're, like we're, these days we have so much abundance and everything. We have all this time to worry about 
every little thing and over analyze every little thing and so I try not to do that I try to avoid doing that so like if I uh, like when it comes to like muscle mass it's like if, if I started to see like wow I feel really weak and I don't feel good and and you know that kind of thing I I would start to get concerned but basically with OMAD you are consuming the same number of calories like it, it it's all just really you know which way do you want to do it do you want to eat three smaller meals a day or do you want to eat two kind of bigger meals or do you just want to eat one big meal you're, you're still getting the same stuff it's just with OMAD you get it all at once so that's how I look at it uh, but I'm not a doctor I, I should have said that right out the gate I'm not a doctor I'm not a nutritionist I'm not a dietitian I'm just some I'm just somebody who's been there and done that on the weight loss journey so uh, Rajesh Kumar says hey I'm from India oh wow so cool that you're from India um, I love your channel uh, oh, and the channel inspired uh, me to me a lot I started my weight loss journey this February 12th till now I'm already uh, down three kilogram, uh, kilograms and I'm doing OMAD and walking six miles a day awesome <laughs> so you're doing like exactly what I did <laughs> so uh, that's great I um, I hope it goes well for you. Uh, it, I mean, and man, you just kind of jumped into it. Sounds like what to OMAD um, because it's what this just March first, and so you started this in mid February. So you're already making great progress, by the way. Like three, three, three uh, kilograms. Like I always have to like do the math. I think it's like that's like two point two times three. I think that's like six pounds, right? Like six point something pounds, six and a half pounds, maybe. I'm I'm not good with the flipping stuff back to metric and everything, but um, that's fantastic. That's a fantastic rate of loss, first of all. Um, I went very, very slowly to OMAD. I, it was something that I really came gradually to. Um, I was, um, you know, I started out with a very short fasting window, worked my way up very, very, very slowly. And I, I have been, do, I have been, well, inconsistently practicing intermittent fasting for about a year before I got to maybe like a 16, 8, 18, 6. And then uh, I got to OMAD about, I, I really got consistent in January of 2016. And then at that point, uh, it took me like another four months or so to get to OMAD. I wasn't even trying to get to OMAD, it just kind of happened. And then after it happened, I was like, I really like this, so can I do it? <laughs> and so, and this worked out great for me. I, I, I still love it. I, I love how it fits in my life. And you know, another thing about OMAD, folks practice this, uh, or, or traditionally they have, um, uh, the, rule, the rule of St. Benedict um, uh, has, you know, the, the suggestion that people eat, or, or, that the monks eat once a day. So, uh, and monks tend to live longer. <laughs> so I don't, I don't think it's too bad for you. Um, again, my opinion. Uh, Heather Levette said, hi, Kayla. Uh, I started my daily weighing today. I'm reluctant, but I'm going to do it. I said to myself, today the specimen weighs. <laughs> and also what gets measured gets managed. Thank you. Yeah, um, that that is great. Uh, I, I find that when you do that, when you just say, I'm doing this, like you commit, like you once you commit to something, to just doing it, you don't debate with yourself anymore. You don't have to sit there and think like, well, should I weigh today? Or am I feeling like I wanna to weigh today? Like, it's just like, this is what I do. And if you can depersonalize it, and that, that was really what helped me was just to like think of myself like in the third person, I am, I am, a, I am the nurse and I'm just taking the patient's weight. And um, when I did that, it helped me to like, um, kind of like a divorce myself from the emotions of weight. Um, before, you know, like when I was a kid even, and I would get on the scale and the number would not be the one I wanted to see. I would just have all this negative, you know, like, uh, self-talk, you know, uh, talking to myself like, oh, you know, you have no self-control and look at that number and you're so fat and, you know, like all this bad stuff. Um, uh, and I was just judging, right? I just so judgy. Um, and so then when I just said, okay, like, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm just going to weigh myself. And this is a piece of data. It means nothing about like, what kind of wife I am, what kind of mom I am. This is not like a judgment on anything. This is just like a piece of data. This is how many pounds I weigh today. And that number is true, whether I get on the scale or not. <laughs> so to hide from that number uh, is not a good idea. Um, traditionally, what I saw, and this is why I 
began to weigh every day and why I continue to weigh every day in maintenance. Um, so I've just decided I'm just always going to weigh. The reason I do that is because, again, you know, in the past, I could get the weight off. Like there, there are many times I, I would lose, like I would lose like big chunks of weight. I remember after my first son was born, I lost like 60 pounds or something, um, but I couldn't keep it off. And the thing that would always happen is like, when I'm losing weight, I'm weighing, I'm getting on the scale, I'm weighing in, it's like, okay, it's, it's trending down, okay. And then I would get to my, you know, get to the, the goal weight and it'd be like, thank God, I'm done with weighing. <laughs> and so then I would stop weighing. And then what would quickly happen is because I wasn't weighing, it was like the, the, the weight would just come back on. It's just so easy to eat too much food. It's, we have so much food, so readily available. I enjoy eating. Um, I, I, and I didn't realize this previously um, until about, I'd say like 2015, 2016, I started to become aware of what an emotional eater I was. So many times I was eating out of boredom also, or procrastination, um, you know, just stress eating. Uh, I tend to be a worrier, so that, that was like another thing. Like I'm worried, so I'll go eat. And I wasn't thinking of it that way. It was just more like, I feel hungry, so yeah, I feel hungry, so therefore I should definitely eat because if I'm feeling hungry and I don't eat, then I'm gonna put my body into starvation mode and then I'm gonna like wreck my metabolism. And so it caused me to become obese. <laughs> so um, yeah, what gets measured gets managed too. That's one of the, um, it's one of my uh, things that I say in my head all the time. It's like whatever gets managed, whatever gets measured gets managed. And, and that was, you know, in 2015, um, no, sorry, 2014, uh, 2014, I was not weighing myself. I had had, a like, I've, I've had enough moment. I, I was like, I've got to do something about my weight. I've got to get it off. And, um, I didn't weigh, I didn't want to weigh. I was like, no, I don't want to be a slave to the scale. So I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to lose weight. People, you know, uh, uh, don't have to get on the scale in order to lose weight. Um, but because I was not weighing, I couldn't tell if anything I was doing was working. Um, and I was flitting from one thing to the other. I was just not really being consistent at all. I didn't really have a plan at all. And so, um, so yeah, so no results that first whole year. And then I finally got on the scale on February, I can't remember, February 20 something in 2015. And, um, I mean, and the number was way worse <laughs> than I thought it was going to be. It was so much worse. Like I thought I was going to be 185 at the high end and I was 222.2 and I was like, whoa, I, I mean, I was off by 40 something, you know, like close to 40 pounds, really, really over 40 pounds. Cause I really like deep down, it's like, it's probably like 170s, but worst case is like 185. <laughs> it was way more. So I had a lot more, you know, a lot more, um, weight to lose than I even thought. Um, but there was this piece that came over me once I just said, okay, I'm weighing, like, this is what I do. Like, I, I just need to weigh. And if I always weigh, I'm never going to be back in this particular situation again, where I've let my weight get to this point where I didn't even realize this was what was happening. And, um, and sure enough, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm glad that I committed to daily weighing and I'm glad that I continue to, to, to commit uh, to, uh, to do it every day um, because in maintenance it's about like staying in good habits and just making sure that you know like it's just really easy to slip back into old habits and if you if you combine that with you're not weighing anymore it's just like it can so easily creep back on I mean even in maintenance I've had times where it's like the numbers going up and why is the number going up and that daily weighing habit has helped me to to like get ahead of that problem. Whereas in the past, what would have happened is I would have put on like 20 pounds and been like, you know, what's going on? Why are my pants not fitting? <laughs> you know, so. Okay, Rajesh says, one of my friends told me to eat a lot of protein, otherwise I will lose muscle mass. Is that correct? You know, like, again, I, I just don't worry about that kind of thing. I eat protein as much as I can. Uh, you know, protein happens to be like expensive right now in the grocery store, at least here in America, uh, or I feel like it is for, for what you get. Um, uh, so I, I try to, uh, when it comes to grocery shopping, I try to, you know, fit as much protein in as we can. Um, but it just, again, I just don't worry about it. Like cultures have just eaten the food. Like they have not, they didn't even know how much protein was in stuff. It was just like, 
here, let's eat this. And so, uh, like you could, you could look up some information on fasting and like, and, uh, you know, muscle loss and stuff like that. But there's a lot of bro science out there. A lot of people speak with a lot of certainty about a lot of things. And I try to not do that, but I mean, I'm sure I'm guilty as the next person. But my point is, I would just say, like, I just wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> That's really what I would say. Like, don't worry about that stuff. Just like, if you are overweight, you need to lose weight, right? Like that, if that's your goal, you need to lose weight. Well, then you gotta lose some weight. Um, yeah. You might want to check out Peter Atia, um, if, if like uh, on that specifically, because he does a lot with intermittent fasting, and he has uh, talked a good deal about, you know, m muscle mass and such. Okay, Green Tree says I watched Ionic, Dr. Carvalho and Lane saying that randomized studies show that fasting works the same as normal eating if calorie restriction is the same. Would like to know your opinion. Yeah, I agree. Totally agree with that. Um, or I mean, um, in my in my humble opinion. Now I've I, like I, I don't have a laboratory, right? I, and I don't um, I don't claim to like have any like data to back this up. But I think that's how intermittent fasting works. Is it just helps people to eat the right amount of calories? Um, it, and, and I know people, like, there's a lot of pushback on that. Like, some people, I, I mean, I've, I've told people that, or, I, you know, like, I see people talking about intermittent fasting, and there is this, um, for some people, it seems like, no, there's just this magic that happens with intermittent fasting, and it's the autophagy, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, in my opinion, it's not that. It's just that you're, like, <laughs> there was a notification, and I thought I had that. <laughs> I thought I, whoops, sorry. I thought I had my notifications, uh, turned off. Can you guys still hear me? Like, um, uh, if, if, if you could let me know if you can still hear me because, uh, I don't want those notifications to interrupt. So, um, so yeah, so the, ca so calorie restriction, right? Like the, the thing is, is like you may, s well, let me put it this way. I find it very difficult to eat the right amount of calories if I'm counting calories and I'm trying to eat like three meals a day or like small meals and snacks and that kind of a thing. I get very like um, restricted feeling and I think it feels really hard, right? Like it's, it's like really, really difficult. It feels really difficult to, um, uh, to do it. I feel like I'm not eating nearly enough. Like this is not enough food. I don't feel full. I don't feel satisfied. Yet, if I just eat one big meal a day, like, so I'm just eating OMAD, I'm eating the right amount of calories uh, and I feel full and it feels good. And so I think that, that, that that's why some people get convinced that it's like, no, there's something with fasting because I'm able to eat a lot more. I think it's just the feeling of feeling satiated. Like when you, when you're practicing intermittent fasting, in, in my experience, um, you're eating the right amount of food because your time is just getting squashed. So as long as you're obeying that window, it's just harder to overeat. Now, this is also why I, why some people don't lose weight with intermittent fasting because they're still able to eat too many calories in that window. Uh, some people use the, the eating window as like a all, all the time eating, snacking, grazing, you know, and they're eating, you know, like if you're going to eat 3000 calories <laughs> in your eating window and you're burning, uh, you know, like just through the course of a day, 2000 calories, you're going to be gaining weight with intermittent fasting, even if you're being consistent with the intermittent fasting. So why, why do intermittent fasting? You might think, right? Like the re again, the reason for me is because that's the thing I can do where I feel good, where I feel like I can, where I can actually succeed at eating the right amount of food. Otherwise I can always justify another bite, a little snack, a little, you know, like, oh yeah, let's, let's have a little, you know, a little bite of this, a little bite of that. Let's finish up that little bit of food that the kid left on the table. Uh, eat, you know, this, that, and the other, and pretty soon I'm obese again. And that's just how it works for me. Now, some people are the complete opposite of that. Some people don't do well with fasting at all. Um, uh, usually, I mean, like in my experience, those people don't have a weight problem. But, um, uh, but like my husband, for example, 
he does not do well with fasting. Um, and I think that's because, you know, he, he, he doesn't have much fat on his body. And, uh, and he just tends to be the type of person who's always up moving around, doesn't eat a lot at each meal either. And so, um, if you're nor if you're just naturally like that, well, you don't have a weight problem. Uh, but I think that that kind of explains why that is. There's just, there's just some, uh, stuff that maybe seems like, oh, this is magic. Really, I, that's just my opinion that intermittent fasting is not magic, which is why it's, it's kind of good news, I think, that it's like, so if intermittent fasting just doesn't work in your life, it's like, oh, I tried it and I just hate it, or I, you know, it just doesn't, it just doesn't fit. It's okay, like, it, it doesn't mean that you'll never lose weight. It just means like, you just haven't found that right plan that will help you to get the right amount of calories uh, in your life. And, and sometimes that might be something super simple for some people, like if you just eliminate snacks. So you just say, I'm just going to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner and learn how to eat the right amount so that I'm just eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm not eating snacks. And then you can still lose weight. You can lose weight all different kinds of ways. I remember I had just finished losing 80 pounds and, uh, I had struck up a conversation with a lady at like this, uh, breakfast. And, uh, we were talking about how, like she, she had lost weight she had lost over a hundred pounds and you know how she did it? Uh, six small meals a day, like evenly spaced. And, you know, and it's like, yeah, of course. I mean, it, it makes sense. And that was, I was really glad that I had that conversation with her, uh, because I think there's this tendency. You just want to, you want to believe like that you, uh, like, you have the answer, right? Like, okay, yeah, now I've got it. But it was good to have that reminder of like, no, you just found the way that worked for you and and it can work the other way. It's just that it doesn't work for you because again, my bad habits. <laughs> so um, let's see here. Next question. Wow, there's a lot of good questions. Um, inspired by Christ LJ says, have Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Uh, I am happy to say that it's true. My body gets used to eating in a shorter period. 16 hours to 18 hours of dirty fasting has become easier. I can remember when it was hard. Maybe OMAD is next. Yeah. I mean, in my, in my experience, each thing gets easier. Like at this point, I do feel like I could, if I, if I, if it was important to me, fast for longer periods of time, you know, like, uh, you know, I, I don't know, I, but I don't know a good reason to do this, but I mean, I could go longer. Um, I remember like when I was doing OMAD in the beginning, it was like OMAD felt really easy provided that, you know, the, the meal times were about the same time. But like, if I needed to wait like a couple of hours past my normal eating time to eat, uh, that felt really difficult, like in the beginning. Uh, but these days it's like, it doesn't matter. I don't keep up with it. It's like, I could eat at, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon one day and wait till about you know, seven or so the next day. And it just, w it just wouldn't be a thing because my body's just become so used to eating one meal a day. Um, your body does get used to fasting. So yeah. Awesome. Oh, excuse me. I just need a sip of water. Green Tree said, I like OMAD or even TUMAD because I prefer to eat bigger and less frequent meals rather than snack sized ones more often. Yeah, I'm the same way. Like, I have definitely found through, through through this whole process, like, when I eat just a small meal, and now to me, like, okay, <laughs> I guess we have to define small um, and, and big, maybe. Um, but, like, if I eat for breakfast, like, an egg sandwich... Okay. Do people do that? I don't know. Like I can, I, I eat an egg sandwich. That would be, that would be a, a breakfast for me. That, that would be what I would think of as like, that's just a small meal. Like, so I'm talking, you know, two pieces of bread, mayonnaise on them, and then an egg, an egg cooked in butter. Like I can eat that. And I don't know how many calories that is, but I do not feel full. <laughs> like I, I, I feel like, okay, like, let's eat something else because that didn't quite do it for me. And so the problem is if, if I, if I don't reel myself back in from that, I will just eat three big meals a day. Like if it's a day where I'm like, you know, I'm just going to do three meals a day today. I, I have to be more like, okay, yeah. Like I need to think about what my OMAD would be and then divide that by three. Um, and, and that would be each meal. And to me that those meals just like they just don't like satiate me 
And so then it's always just easy to be like, well, I didn't eat quite enough at breakfast, so I need to eat this little little, little bit of something here and a little bit of something there. And again, that, that just leads to me eating too many calories. Um, yeah, two, two meals a day also, I, li I like that too. Uh, I find that to be a lot easier than the three meal a day the kind of scenario. Um, I, I bet OMAD is just so easy. It just like, you don't have to think about food until supper time. <laughs> and then it's just, it's just, it's a, sim a life simplification thing also. Emmanuel K says, how many pounds range uh, does your weight vary? Okay, so I, I did talk about this. I should mention, I've written books. Um, but in this book, I talked about how much my weight has varied in maintenance. And so um, I, I keep meaning to, uh, you know, like have these uh, <laughs> written out somewhere. So uh, the highest my weight has gone in maintenance, as far as just a single day weight, um, was 154. So like when I say single day weight, that just means like I get on the scale one morning and it's like 154. Um, the low, the, sorry, not the lowest, but the, um, the, the highest, my seven day average has been though, has been 152. So it's about a 10 pound range. Um, if I find my weight creeping up past 150, like, so 150, 151, I'm like, okay, I, I'm probably overeating. Usually it's stress. Like these are, these are just patterns I've noticed. Like, um, you know, if the weight starts to creep up, Usually it's like some stressful thing is going on and I have been eating just a little bit more at the meals, you know, even if it's OMAD. I mean, I, I have found that my weight can even creep up on OMAD because again, like, and what, and what I, the, the things that I generally notice there are like, okay, there have been, it's been more often, and this is subtle. It's so like, it's really subtle in maintenance. Um, it's like, okay, there have been meals where I get up from the table and I'm overly full. Like what happened there? Like what's going on? And so then what I usually find when I backtrack a little bit more, or if I just pay attention to meals going forward, I am catching myself eating really fast. Like I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm not really paying attention to the food. I'm just like shoveling it in. That's usually again, because my mind is elsewhere. It's like, I'm thinking about that thing I'm worried about. And so I'm not really thinking about the food. And so then I'm eating too much at the end of the day. So, um, uh, so yeah, so that, so I would say about a, you know, um, that uh, over the course of, you know, five and a half years, that, that is how much it has varied. Uh, I would say about a 10 pound range. Uh, and, and by the way, according to everything I've read, uh, there's not a whole lot of data out there as far as I can tell. If anybody comes across loads of data on this, I'd be interested to know. Uh, but, uh, just, you know, how much does, do, 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 does the general population, like a person without a weight problem who is just like, they're just living life. Like they're not even thinking about what they're eating. They're just like living life. And what are they, what do they weigh? What, what are they weighing on a day-to-day -day basis? It's about a 10 pound range. Um, that's, you know, that's my understanding. So, um, as far as like, but I would say like, general I would say my weight the as far as single day weights it's usually in about a five pound range like w within a given week there might there might be like a five pound variance there which makes sense because water weight happens and you know so there are lots of reasons why your weight goes up and down and up and down and learning about those fluctuations really helps you <laughs> Uh, to stick with the weight loss journey and to not quit because if you get frustrated and and think that you need to quit because you know your weight went up by five pounds last night and you can't figure it out and you, it's like I would didn't even do anything wrong <laughs> like I did I, I'm hungry this morning and my weight's up five pounds like what's going on uh, that's water weight and it will go away but you just have to stick with it um, uh, so yeah so uh, uh, so I I recommend um, that if you're if you're in maintenance giving yourself like a 10 pound range that's worked well for me uh that seems to be kind of the consensus i think like um joe holman from uh omad revolution i think what he says is 15 pounds um and i mean it's really arbitrary you know it's like you, like you could pick 11 pounds or you know nine pounds or you know it's really what 
what can you be comfortable with? What will give you like a sense of peace about it? Like I, you know, if, if the range is too big, that might give you like stress. <laughs> uh, but if it's too small, it, it would probably give you stress because it's like you're, you might always feel like you're uh, failing or, you're the, or that you're failing often. Like if you just are sometimes out of that stricter range, um, you, you have to know yourself well and then, and then give yourself the range that's appropriate for you. So, uh, okay. Yes, Jackie Jude asked, do you weigh yourself every day? I do. Um, first thing in the morning, uh, that's just what I do. I get on the scale, I go to the bathroom, I get on the scale, first thing, don't think about it, just do it and record that number. And then I keep track of all that data uh, over the years in a spreadsheet. Uh, you can get the spreadsheet, by the way, sixmilestosupper.com slash freebies for free. I don't ask for your email or anything like that. It's a direct download. Um, and it's just a, a, a spreadsheet that you can download and it will calculate your seven day average automatically, uh, which of course you could just write that in, in your own spreadsheet if you like to. <laughs> I love to make spreadsheets. It's like a nerdy thing that I really love to do. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, but you can make your own if you want to, or, you know, different apps have somewhat of the same capability. Like, um, I've heard good things about happy scale. They kind of like average your weight. Um, and, um, uh, uh the Fitbit app, will also average your weight, but it will not give you the running average. It will just give you like, uh, each week it'll give you like one, one piece of data, which is a seven day average. So it'll just take, you know, last week's weight and say your seven day average was this, but like a spreadsheet will show you how it is every, like every day you get a new seven day average because it's taking the, the previous seven days and adding it up divide by seven. So, um, yeah. So yeah, I do weigh myself, uh, and you get used to it again. You like, I'm not, I should definitely point this out. I am not saying that there are days where I'm not frustrated. <laughs> it's like, I, I do have those days where it's like, dad gummit, what, what is going on with my weight today? Um, and I mean, when I sit there, and I really think about it. I, I usually, usually these days I can kind of pinpoint like why it might be up. Uh, it might be something with my cycle. Um, or it might be, um, like, water weight. Like, oh, I had Chinese food last night. Right. And I had a bunch of water because <laughs> uh, I'm thirsty or, um, uh, uh, yeah, it just, it just, they're, they're, you, they're usually somewhat obvious reasons for like an upward number, but there are times where it's like, what, like, why would it do that? I've had times. I mean, sometimes I'm just befuddled, like what, what is going on? But usually, you know, usually I have noticed this too, when, uh, when I react poorly <laughs> to the scale, uh, I am stressed out. Like I'm stressed and it's like, just one more thing, <laughs> one more thing. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Uh, Green Tree, always remembering, uh, that, oh, Green Tree said weighing oneself is crucial when you're in maintenance to self-correct if gaining. So true. It, that is really, that, that's such a good term to use for, um, for maintenance is like, it's just this constant process of self-correcting. Um, and you, it, it, I don't know, like, I, I think everybody probably, um, is like this who has struggled with their weight, like, because it's the thing you've struggled with, like when, especially times of stress come along, the thing you fall back into so easily is that thing that you used to do. Like what, when you're stressed, like what's your go-to, right? So it used to be for me when I'm stressed, I eat. Okay, well, here's the hard part <laughs> about eating as opposed to other types of habits where it, it's a little bit like harder to get back into the habit. Like for example, okay, let, look, I understand smoking is very, very difficult to quit. My dad uh, is, is what was a smoker, is not, not anymore a smoker, but he tried to quit many, many times. And, um, and so I, I totally understand how smoking is difficult to quit. I'm not trying to say it's easy to quit, but one thing about smoking is you don't have to ever smoke a cigarette in your life if you don't want to, <laughs> but you do have to eat. Like you have to continue to eat, even if you have troubles with overeating, like th there's just no getting around it. And I think that's one reason why it, you know, like people struggle with their weight and then there's that whole, you know, like regaining and it's just very common for people to regain. Um, so like when you're stressed out and if eating has been the thing you tend to do when you stress out, oh, 
like when you stress out, um, then when you're stressed out and you do have to eat, then you're kind of like, oh, like I'm stressed and I'm eating right now. <laughs> like you don't want to stress eat, but you kind of have to eat. So, uh, but you also have to learn to not stress. I know that's part of it, but, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, in maintenance, there are just, there's just, I mean, because it's for the rest of your life, you're going to go through hard times. I've definitely seen like so many more difficult things during maintenance as opposed to the weight loss journey itself. Like when I was losing weight, my life, there were just, there was very little, uh, uh, that happened. Like I didn't have any, um, uh, uh, really close people, uh, die or anything like that. But in maintenance, I have lost many people. Um, and I've just like, there, there are just people, very close people to me that are struggling with like cancer, very serious forms of cancer. And it's just like, there's just like all, like s there's so much more stress and maintenance or there has been for me. Um, and it's this constant process of like, okay, yeah, like you, you gotta eat, but that's why I keep weighing too, <laughs> because it's like, because I have to keep eat, eating, I have to keep weighing and keeping myself in check so that I can self-correct. Because it's really difficult. Um, like I said, like most of the time, what, what gets my attention is that number going higher. It's like, oh, oh, am I? Like, I didn't really think I was stressed. And then I start to like, you know, think back. It's like, oh yeah, wait, there is this, this, and this going on right now. So yeah, I probably am a little bit stressed and I'm eating too fast and you know then you just try to start correcting those behaviors um oh Jackie Jude I'm glad you came across this channel too uh Joel Meyer says I really like your idea of weekly weight averages comparing six weeks of data is more like a report card on myself yeah that is uh six weeks of data um that is something that I have found very helpful um in in when I was trying to lose weight uh, I found it most helpful so daily weighing, yes, like every day I get on the scale, I record that number. But I tried as best I could, and it's difficult, but I tried to just not really focus on that number, like it's just a piece of data. And what I really tried to focus on really, really hard was what did my weight look like six weeks ago and what does it look like today? And that helped me because Otherwise, you can start to feel like, oh, I'm in a plateau and I'm just not losing weight. But if you're if you're always just kind of doing a six week look back, um, I found that to be really useful, especially when you're feeling frustrated. If you just do a six week look back, um, I mean, it might show you this, like, oh, yeah, actually, I'm gaining right now. Like, I, I you know, the numbers have been going consistently higher, you know. Uh, but uh, because six weeks kind of takes away, especially for women, uh, the the cyclical uh, differences that happen uh, because you know like m for most women uh, the the week you're on your period it's like your weight goes up by a few pounds um, and then there's sometimes the, there's like this period during uh, or not period but uh, <laughs> there's like a week there where your weight's lower uh, and but then you know but if you if you look six weeks back it kind of takes away all those like little fluctuations that happen even if you're just doing a seven day average and looking at it uh because even with a seven day average it won't be a straight line down there will be ups and downs and it, it's like weight loss is like a heartbeat it just goes up and down and up and down and, and the idea is it goes down over time it trends down over time so uh so yeah it is like a report card and that was another thing i did i don't talk about this very frequently But um, one thing I did uh, in 2016 is I would do what I called checkpoints. So um, once a month, on the 19th of the month, don't know why the 19th, it was just something I picked. Um, on the 19th of the month, I would sit down and I would look at my goals spreadsheet, or not spreadsheet, but my goals document. I had a Google Doc and it had my goals written down and I had broken down my goals into sub goals. And so like for weight, it was like, I wanted to get down to a certain weight. And so I would, I put it as sub goals of five pounds. So like get down to a seven day average of 195, get down to a seven day average of 190, get down to a seven day average of 185. And so then I would sit down on the 19th of the month and any sub goals I had hit, I would mark through them, like strike through the thing, uh, the text, and then next to it, I would write down, I would go back and look at my spreadsheet and say, okay, I achieved that on whatever date. And so then I would put it in big green bold letters, uh, achieved on, and then the date. And, um, and then I would also um, write down, I, I, like I had this little table 
inside the Google Doc and I would put, uh, I would copy and paste a, a picture of myself so that each month I was looking at progress pictures as opposed to daily. So I'd take a picture of myself, tried to take it in the same angle and everything so that I could, you know, I, the idea was like that I would be able to visually see in like one small area my progress. And so um, I put the picture and then underneath that I wrote down what my seven day average was uh, as of that day. Um, and then any sub goals I had achieved uh, since the last checkpoint. And like it, some of the stuff was like, um, uh, I would I would write down notes about different pants and stuff that I had that did not fit me. Uh, I had been gifted like a, a just a bag of pants that somebody had I think had lost weight out of, which um, is not the best feeling. Be like, hey, I lost weight here. You want <laughs> you want the pants that are too big for me now? Um, it's like yes, I do, <laughs> but um, but then I couldn't fit into them, which was even wor <laughs> even worse. But um, but. But the good news is, is eventually I did fit into, I think, all of those pants. Uh, but I would, I would like try them on, uh, on, on the checkpoints day. I'd like pull, you know, try to get them on. And like, sometimes it was like, I could get them up to my knees <laughs> or, you know, like I actually could button them up or whatever. And I would just make little notes and it was motivating. It was just a way for me to kind of like what you were talking about. It was like a little report card, like let's sit down and look at the progress little progress report, right? And, and see what's going on. So, uh, so yeah, that's, it's, it's helpful, I think, to do stuff like that. Um, Dr. Uh, sorry, uh, Green Tree said, Dr. Christopher Gardner, Chris Gardner, wasn't that guy from, uh, Pursuit of Happiness? Isn't that his name? I don't know. Uh, said that, I know it's a different, I'm sure it's a different person, but uh, said that if you're eating enough calories and a variety of foods, you will get more than enough protein. Yeah, I mean, again, that's kind of what I do. It's like, just, um, yeah, <laughs> let's just not worry about it and let's try to eat variety. I mean, I, like, if you look at my eating, um, I mean, I'm sure I probably don't eat enough vegetables. <laughs> like, I've, I've never been great at eating enough vegetables. I like salads and, uh, I, and there are lots of vegetables I like, but you know, that's just, um, I'm sure, uh, people <laughs> would say that, <laughs> uh, unless you're a carnivore, you'd be like, oh, you're eating too many potatoes. But, um, uh, but yeah, like I do feel like if, it's, if you're just like eating a big variety of food and you feel reasonably good, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> Carissa said, I need your channel and podcast. These other clean fasters are way too dogmatic for me. <laughs> yeah, I try not to be dogmatic. I'm very much of the opinion, like, do what works for you. I mean, like, if clean fasting works for you and, and that, like, gives you joy, then go for it. Like, if, great, you know. Uh, but the thing about diets is that, it was, and, and I mean, I was just as guilty as the next person of it, but... Um, when you get into that mindset of like, it, it's this way and this is the only way there is like, and, and even if you're miserable, <laughs> you're like telling other people, you should really be doing this. <laughs> I don't know how many people, uh, you know, like who have, I, who I've known and like, look, if you love keto and you like, you really love keto and that's what's working for you. I get it. That's, that's great. Do keto. But so many people, uh, I like around me have done keto and at the time when they're doing keto, they're like, man, I love this and it, I feel so great and everything. But then eventually they'll not do it anymore. And then eventually they'll start talking about how miserable <laughs> they were on keto. <laughs> But, um, but anyway, I just think that's, it's just a funny kind of human behavior that we do. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, and I should mention, I do a podcast. Haven't done a new episode in a while. I had planned to do one on Wednesday, uh, but that didn't happen. And then I was going to do it on Thursday. It also didn't happen, but I'm, I, there are things going on right now <laughs> in my life where my, my schedule is a little bit just. Like I'm trying to get back into a groove where I'm getting everything accomplished. And so, um, so the podcast will return. I have, I have an idea for a podcast episode. I'm hopeful that it'll come out next week. Um, but yeah, it, I think it's good to be laid back too. Um, that's why I wrote, where's the book? The Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting. The link is in the description. <laughs> okay. Green Tree says they say that studies show that autophagy happens at, in 16 hours of non-eating in mice would be like five days in human fasting. 
So we'd have to fast a lot more to get autophagy. Yeah, green tree, that's something also um, <laughs> that people, uh, like, I don't, I don't often mention it. Again, because for one thing, the science changes so frequently, you know, and so I don't want to like taunt people <laughs> about it. But uh, what, what are the big like things with, uh, with like clean fasts, right? You got to do this clean fasting. You can't even have like a, a mint because then you won't get the benefits of autophagy. But everything I'm reading or everything that I've read, the most recent research, and I mean, again, I don't, I don't often like delve into this stuff because it feels like a rabbit hole. Um, there are conflicting opinions, there's conflicting research and everything, but everything I've read recently uh, seems to point to that people really just, um, they, don't in, they don't get autophagy until maybe like something like at least 72 hours um, of fasting. So like, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> All that clean fasting, even if you're doing just OMAD, apparently, you know, we're not getting the autophagy. Maybe, you know, but I mean, I'm sure some people are like, well, maybe we don't know or we can't detect that autophagy is happening, but it is happening. You know, like, again, I don't do intermittent fasting for the autophagy. I do the intermittent fasting, particularly OMAD, um, because I want to well, because I wanted to lose weight and then because I want to keep it off. Um, and so that's why I allow myself coffee with half and half in it whenever I want it uh, during the you know fasting window, if you want to call it that. Um, because that makes intermittent fasting or, you know, OMAD super easy. Like, it feels like nothing uh, to do it that way. Um, and again, like, I don't, I don't worry about like, oh, that, but those are calories. It's like, no big deal. It's just like, I, as long as I am maintaining my weight, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. It's, uh, on a biological cellular level, like, is mTOR happening? I don't know. <laughs> and I don't care. <laughs> okay, S-E-C-H says, uh, Hi, ma'am. Hello. Uh, do you have a cheat day? And what do you eat? Mm. I've had a cheat day, weekly cheat day, uh, since the beginning of 2016. So January 2016, I got very clear with myself. I'm doing intermittent fasting. I'm, I'm walking six miles a day. That's all I'm going to do. Uh, and I'm going to take Sundays off. So, so Sundays traditionally, uh, have been my cheat day. Uh, it has changed slightly for me for the past few years. We started going to church. So at our church, you're supposed to fast uh, for communion, so we need to fast until about 11.30 on Sundays. 11.30, that's when church is over and we go do coffee hour. Um, and so then at coffee hour, there's usually like lots of food. <laughs> food and coffee and fellowship. So, uh, so my eating on Sundays now starts at about 11.30. And then I just take the day off from fasting like otherwise. Uh, on Sundays still. I keep that same. But one thing that has changed is so, okay, our family tradition, my husband makes homemade pancakes. He used to do it on Sunday, but when we started going to church, we started doing it on Saturday. So on Saturdays, I will eat the pancake breakfast. So on Saturdays, generally for me, it looks like too mad. And then on Sundays, it's just cheat day, but cheat day starts at 11.30. So it's kind of the same, I would say. It's like sort of similar, but it's just slightly different than what I was doing when I was um, actually losing weight. When I was actually losing weight, it was just six days of OMAD, seventh day, cheat day. So what does that look like? What do, what do I eat on cheat day? Well, all throughout the week, every day of, of the year, <laughs> I allow myself to just eat whatever I want. So I don't have special cheat day food. Um, what cheat day was more for was just like, I just want a day of normalcy, <laughs> like a day where I just eat, you know, whenever my family is eating. Uh, Cause it's weird, right? To eat uh, differently than the people around you are eating. Uh, and if you're eating like one meal a day, that's pretty weird. So um, I was like, I just want like one day. And it helped solve the problem of the pancake breakfast uh, back then. Uh, Cause it kept throwing me off. But um, what my eating looked like, Back on, you know, like back when I was trying to lose weight, uh, what I usually found was like I would eat the things that I couldn't quite fit, especially when I got to OMAD, like um, that didn't quite fit with OMAD. So uh, sandwiches, 
right? Like a sin, which is not an omad. <laughs> like you got to eat multiple sandwiches if you're going to make that into an omad. So like a, a I, I remember I would get these cravings like, oh, like I really miss a, a sandwich with, with, with turkey meat on it. Just like, just sandwich meat, right? Like I, I just would crave it. And I, and I would think, well, you know, it doesn't quite fit with what I'm doing, but um, I could have that on my cheat day. And so that's what I would eat. Like, I, would, I mean, not just one sandwich. I would eat that at, you know, sometime during the course of the day. And it was funny because like, I would let myself have it and be like, why did I even crave that? So it's not even that good. <laughs> it's just like cheap meat from Walmart. <laughs> so um, it, was, uh, it was just funny to me. Uh, it taught me a little, little something about like cravings and stuff like that. But um, but like uh, these days, uh, like what it usually looks like on Sundays would be um, at, at church, uh, at coffee hour, I'll eat like a plate full of food. Like they have, you know, these little disposable plates and I'll just, you know, I, I usually try to get, you know, a little something that everybody brought um, and, uh, and, and I'll just eat. I try not to uh, overeat. <laughs> on cheat day. That is one thing. People ask me, do you have any rules on cheat day? The one rule would be don't overeat. So, so, so the cheat day, and I, I call it cheat day because I thought that that would, um, well, it's just how it was. That's how I, um, had heard of the idea. Like Tim Ferriss talked about a cheat day. I was like, Oh, well, that's an interesting idea. Like, yeah, just take one day off and then you have more, uh, uh, you might be more consistent if you take a day off every week than if you try to just white knuckle. So, um, but I never thought of it as cheating on my plan. Okay. Uh, like I just thought of it mentally as like a day off. I called it the cheat day, but I never was like, Ooh, I'm cheating. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, this is just like day off. So, um, so yeah, so I'll eat, um, you know, plate full of food at uh, coffee hour. It, it kind of depends. Sometimes there's a lot of food and sometimes there's like less food. Um, and so if there's less food, then when I get home, we're probably going to eat something, you know, leftovers usually from uh, the, this, you know, the previous week's meals. I, I do, I should add that. So I do eat whatever I want. I eat dessert whenever I want it. I drink wine whenever I want it. Um, I have, you know, cookies, cakes, sweets, all that stuff, whenever I want it. Like I have no restrictions on anything like that. Um, but one thing that I, I do is generally speaking, I mo like I eat the food that I'm eating. It's homemade. Like I, I cook the food. Um, I make it usually from scratch. I don't buy a lot of prepackaged stuff. I love to cook. Uh, and it's a lot cheaper <laughs> to cook from scratch than it is to buy, uh, prepackaged stuff. So, um, so that's what I do. Um, so, so yeah, so, um, so I'll just eat like leftovers, you know, if like, you know, people want popcorn, we'll have popcorn and, um, yeah. It, and if I snack, I do, I do try to be aware that snacking traditionally for me has been like a thing that I do when I'm nervous because I'm, you know, I'm like, I'm like, Ooh, yeah, I'm like, I'm worried about this thing. So I, I do try to just be aware, like when I'm snacking, like, okay, let's make sure you're not doing this because you're stressed. So, okay, let's see. Wow. It has almost been an hour. Uh, let's see here. Are there any other questions? Alina P. Hey, Alina. Uh, thanks for uh, being an insider. Uh, does the 10 pound maintenance range really mean that we only pay, pay attention to that high number? It seems, <laughs> it seems to me that's what it means to me. You know, that's a funny thing. I think that's a human thing. Alina, um, because so, because <laughs> so what she's saying, I, I, if if I'm if I'm uh, interpreting you correctly, Alina, it's kind of like what we really pay attention to is don't go over that high number, <laughs> and so then will you just kind of hang out at that high number, high, you know, just below that high number? That is, I, I do find myself a lot of times hanging out like up at the higher end. And I don't worry about it again, because that is my goal. My goal is to be in the one forties, right? Like, so if it's 149.8, I'm achieving that goal. Um, and I don't, and I don't really care, you know, like I, I, because, and I've talked about this a lot, you know, like when I was at 158, I, I maintained it like 158 to 163. That was my first, like, uh, like 
the first time I stopped losing weight on purpose and I was like, I'm going to maintain for a while. I was at the 150, 158 mark. I felt great there. Felt very comfortable. I got down to 142. Felt great. Felt comfortable. Didn't really feel any different though. The only thing that was different was I had to eat less food <laughs> in order to stay down there. So I was like, okay, well, I don't necessarily want to gain 15 pounds, but I also don't really want to be like, oh, I've got to always be at 142 because that's more restrictive. So 140s felt comfortable. Feels comfortable to me and feels doable. Jackie Ju says, well, vaping tobacco break a fast. You know, like I'm just one of those people, I don't really care what breaks a fast. Like what, what, like uh, the technicality of it. It's like, first of all, I imagine that has no calories. So it's a no, <laughs> but, um, uh, but uh, yeah, like it really, I think that the thing, if you're trying to lose weight, what you should pay attention to is, uh, this, this thing that I'm doing in the fasting window. So whatever that is, like it, maybe it's having a, a protein shake, right? Or maybe it's like, oh, I have a, I have, a, you know, one bottle of Mountain Dew every day, right in the middle of the fasting window. Yeah, that probably breaks fast technically. But, uh, but if your goal is to just lose weight, then I say, then do that thing. Like, just make that your rule. You know, I, this is what I do. And, um, I, I, I like, because the, what you're trying to achieve is the weight loss, right? It's not necessarily to get through the fasting window in a certain kind of way. It is to lose weight. That's the, that's the way I approach fasting and such. So, okay. All right. Let's see. Janice started fasting in January with a 12 hour fast, increased to 13 in February, now 14 in March. I've lost five pounds. Big thanks for putting the ideas of food parameters around, or of parameters around food. Well, that, that is great, Janice. Congratulations on dropping five. That is really good. Um, uh, happy 11, happy 111 said, uh, do you have examples of your spreadsheets that you just talked about in any of your books? Actually, I don't know. I think, I think in, so, in, in several of the books I did, um, include like little excerpts of like, here are what my numbers look like for a particular week, or here's how much my, uh, seven day average fluctuated, uh, like in the workbook that I have, um, which is available six miles com slash workbook. Uh, it gives an example of like, here is, you know, how much my weight fluctuated in a given week. And this is why it's important not to necessarily pay too much attention to the fluctuations, but look at the overall picture. Um, uh, but, uh, but the actual spreadsheet, I don't think in any of the books I've like shown like you know, like a picture of the spreadsheet. It's just hard to do that in books, like, and make it look right. So anyway, uh, all right. Green tree. I stopped worrying about getting autophagy and now only avoid those little bites of food throughout the day because they'd stimulate the appetite. <laughs> yeah. Rather than stopping autophagy. That is very true. Uh, I find that it's like, man, once that first bite, right. Then it's like, Oh, like, why did I even have that? <laughs> <laughs> because now it's like, you know, cause like if you're tasting food or something like that, it's like, ah, oh, now I've eaten <laughs> and now I'd like to eat more, <laughs> but I'm not going to because I'm fasting. <laughs> so, okay. Well, it's been an hour. So, uh, thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, this is a lot of fun. Uh, if you uh, are interested, uh, I have courses available about weight loss. I also do coaching and, uh, I have a podcast. Uh, you can see all the episodes of the podcast or <laughs> listen to them, uh, either on your favorite podcast player. All you have to do is, um, search for six miles to supper, or, uh, you can go to my website and listen on there at six miles to supper.com slash podcast. So, uh, thank you guys so much for joining me and I'll see you next week.